Welcome back everyone to another episode of Advanced RC Adventures. A2RC here. This is a channel where we investigate, explore, build and explain, upgrade and advance Nitro RCs to another level. Come start another adventure with me. Today is the Tay and we're going to be showing the upgraded Kyosho Mantis two-wheel drive Nitro GP. This is the last time that you'll more than likely um, see the stock build unless it shows up from here uh, time to time. So let's go right into the upgraded GP Mantis. Take a look here. This is what I had envisioned when I first saw that Kyosho Mantis GP. Look at what we've got. We've got still our independent suspension. We have front shocks. We have rear shocks. Same GX12 CR engine, but with the upgraded head. Same Kyosho Blue transmission. A little surprise down below that will let you take a look. We've got that custom 6 volt 5 cell UK battery pack there on the right hand side. We're using um, a vintage Spectrum, but it is a SR3000, which is still 2.4 gigahertz. We'll talk a little bit about that too, why not? Some fresh fuel line. We're sporting a little bit of red and blue color scheme based off of the fuel tank we've got our blue and more red the blue and red is scattered throughout right now we just have um, some contact foams on here that we're going to be using for um, some testing and tuning let's take a look at the bottom I mentioned that we did a little bit of upgrade so we countersunk all of our pan head screws and we now have flush mount countersunk screws i decided to keep a little bit of vintage look and used um phillips flat heads just again to keep that little bit of vintage look but everything is recessed and flat while we're down here let's take a look at our fuel tank in the past episodes I mentioned that we did a little update or upgrade to the bottom. These fuel tanks, they're universal. They have um, two sides for the inlet outlet. We have our red silicone cap and what we have here is a small um, butyl O-ring and some clear heat shrink to kind of cinch that O-ring down onto that silicone cap to give a little bit of additional reinforcement to make sure um, under pressure that will come off. Now, that's still yet to be taste tested. We have not ran this car yet. We're waiting. We were waiting to keep um, it clean so that we can make a presentation for everybody. So, I mentioned there's a big change. And yeah, there's a big change. Take a look. This looks like um, a car that um, is more like today's standards now than um, mid 90s without proper suspension, without a proper tune pipe. And um, it looks looks pretty um, darn nice if you ask me. Let's set it down here and we'll do a little spin. So, right in here we have our um, camber links and I decided to, um, to keep the, the look similar. I decided to keep the same camber links but we have now them on the inboard side of that C-Hub. And we had to make a, a modification. We had to make a modification so that they can be on the inboard side. And the reason why we did that is we had to make room for our updated, upgraded shocks. So with me being um, big into belted RS4s, what I have on hand most all of the time are HBI components. 
and I've used that what these are are some sport shocks from 10th scale uh, nitro RS4 and again we're going with the red and the blue color scheme nice action we had to um, use and make our own um, standoffs here um, to and mounted it onto that upper uh, mantis body tower drilled through tapped the holes put some spacers in made sure we had clearance we took out the um the springs down below and the grub screws of course are not needed any longer and that turned out real slick it turned out really nice let's um let's look at the engine this definitely is an upgraded head it's the same gx12 cr engine and um with being in the hobby and loving engines and exhaust you tend to have a number of um, different style headers and exhaust available and i had to go through a, a couple different header profiles to make sure that it would clear this tire now these foams are turned down a little bit uh, more than what they normally might be but i tested them on a normal 26 millimeter touring car tire to make sure that we had clearance between the header here some of them needed um, weren't didn't work because they weren't going to clear the pull start and some weren't going to work because they weren't going to clear the tire but this one worked out pretty nice and i i believe that this is um, a vintage uh, dynamite one of the vintage dynamite profiles and then sticking with sticking with the age and the theme we have a v1 ron paris ribs pipe which um is a great color and keeps still the build uh, period correct and will allow for this uh, GX12 to really scream um, and have a lot of performance um, and updated uh, power um, while removing that rear exhaust. Notice that rear deflected exhaust is um, no longer there. I had to make one curious um, improvement or adjustment uh, to make sure that we could clear this pull start and I had to use um, a spacer of sorts. What I have here is a normal gasket then an aluminum dynamite gasket which is I don't know about one mil one and a half mil thick and then another standard um, exhaust gasket going to the header flange and that should provide it provided enough clearance for the header on the pull start and still gives um should give a good seal there at the moment we're still using the 3003 futaba um, servos just for testing eventually that will they will be updated probably to some protex or or something of that nature let's take a look at that the rear suspension similar kind of idea to the front we had to tap, uh, drill and tap into these uh, Mantis rear body post, some um, shock standoffs, and some spacers. And that worked well. I was a little worried at first, take a look, we had to relocate these camber links to the inboard side of the car. But again, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to use them um, so it would still look like a Mantis and nothing um, too, too upgraded. I had to drill and tap down below here and put a small spacer, but we have a perfect amount of clearance between that spur gear. Nothing will get in the way, and we still keep the stock uh, camber lengths and stock camber adjustment while still being able to utilize the same spur gear, same brake, brake mechanism, etc. All right, let's take off this air filter for a second so we can see a little bit better. Look down inside of there. We got half of the Kyosho blue, don't we? But what I've done is I've updated the clutch bell to a steel clutch bell. This is an HPI version. And let's see if I can 
Let's take a look. This is a 13 tooth clutch bell compared to the 14 tooth clutch bell it came with. Still using the same flywheel, still same using um, that pilot nut. But I wanted, since this is a relatively small displacement 12 um, size engine and does not have the same kind of power output as today's 12s, I wanted it to have just a little bit more torque. And so I stepped it down one tooth down inside of there from a 13 or from a 14 to a 13 to give just a little bit uh, more acceleration. We'll see um, how that works. Let's go around and take a look at this battery. Saw the battery on the other video. I think that turned out pretty nice. Still gives um, our six volt, five cell, super low profile just sticks out there just a slight bit almost looks like it was made for this car doesn't it these updates completely change the look the stance more than likely they're definitely going to update the performance of the car from the updated um, front and rear shocks to the tune pipe The, the Spectrum SR3000 receivers are something that I've been using now for over 15 years. Continue to try to find them new. Now, I've been um, recently moving to use uh, some Futabas, but I wanted to give some amount of, of vintage look, some vintage feel to this upgraded Kyosho Mantis while still having some safety and some security and some, some range with the receiver. We'll get some live action startup with the engine. Let you guys hear uh, the engine idle for the first time. I have yet, I've been waiting, I've yet to start these engines. They've been completely refreshed, like I mentioned in the other videos, but I'm ready and, and waiting. It's been a long awaited kind of journey and uh, appreciate you guys taking it along with me to go through the cars, show what it has, the kind of features, what it has um, to offer. And just take a look, take a look. You, we've been looking at the stock Mantis GP rear wheel drive version through so many videos. This is a completely different car. Totally different. It's such an awesome transformation. It takes a very interesting car like this Kyosho Mantis and turns it on its head and, and makes it to a completely new car. This is what I would believe that if Kyosho was able to do a quick, not a quick, but a redesign in the um, early 2000s of this car, but still trying to keep, still trying to keep it period correct. This is kind of how I envision it. They put on shocks, they put on a proper tune pipe. They do some updates here and there and um, turn it into a totally different kind of animal. Some of the other small updates is instead of using standard three millimeter nuts, we now have some lock nuts. We've uh, changed, changed some of the hardware um, to these hex style um, M3 screws. We have that here on, on the back here as well. And on that, if you wanna call it a, a rear bumper, we put those M3 nylon locking nuts there on the same time. We've done a full chassis tweak and suspension check. We have checked the load balance of the car and made some, some um, changes and tweaks. Of course, with the large majority of the weight being in the rear, the weight bias is towards the rear, but it's not um, 
that bad of a thing is actually probably a good thing because since this being rear wheel drive, a little bit of weight bias to the rear is, is a good thing for traction. Help to keep that front end um, nimble at the same time. I've been so excited to show you, so excited to show everyone. A lot of uh, my buddies in the hobby, they have yet to see this car fully done. So this is um, their opportunity to kind of relish in the detail of the car as well. It's so fun for someone that has been in the hobby for 20 plus years to find something that I haven't seen hadn't had before in the collection and not just make a vintage car run again, but completely transform it into a more modern style type of, of car adding a little bit of tweak of performance and bring it back to life. So we're gonna have a lot of fun running, testing and tuning this car. Okay, we're back in from the live action. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Well, what did we learn? And what have we found out? So the, the, the biggest takeaway is that um, these vintage brakes um, absolutely do not work well. And I think that's a big part of why we don't see something um, like that today. So that this drum style you know, going on that blue spur, um, do all the adjusting you want. It just slips, 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 slips. And um, most of the time it doesn't even lock up the rear wheels and you would think that it would with only two wheel drive. What's another thing we learned? Well, we definitely need some more traction. Well, at least on the street I was running on, um, it was a little dusty. And with two wheel drive, it's definitely easy to get these foams clogged and do some slipping. But in the areas that had um, no dust and dirt on it, it actually held really well. So the suspension is working, it's turning well, it's just with foams and um, some dusty conditions, it's gonna slip around. So this is uh, definitely not a speed demon. So right now with our gearing, we have a whopping 26 miles an hour. So I think in the in the future, I'm going to um, gear up. I had the initial thought of gearing down, and that's why I put um, that other clutch belt on it. But I'm actually going to gear up 
and um, I think it's going to help with two-wheel drive with initial grip and then of course with top speed. Let's go over some of these um, test and tune um, track times and data logs. So we did 300 foot test drives and within that 100 foot we um, were around 21, 22 mile an hour. Remember, this is not for top speed, it's to look at acceleration in G-force and take a look at the power curves. So the, the quickest elapsed time in that 100 foot um, is shown here, 4.05 with a 22 max mile an hour. And it looks like um, this has the, the highest acceleration or G-force recorded which is um, just under 0.6 G, 0.57. So nothing super exhilarating, but still definitely fun. Get some, some data, some baseline data for um, future tests and tune. So another thing is um, with these single needle carbs, it is, as people may know, especially folks that have been in, t in the hobby for many, many years, there's a reason why um, they pushed carb technology, fuel delivery technology, and these single carbs, single needle carbs, um, they, they just don't cut it. You um, cannot get a perfect tune on low or top end. Definitely found fuel cut, and that's what you need to do anyway when you're trying to do top speed run, and then you back it off. But there's never a perfect balance between um, high, end, high RPM tune and low end. Um, idle tune and acceleration with these single needle, needle carbs. So that's definitely um, a hindrance or a drawback. The uh, battery pack um, worked perfectly. Everything is working well. And, but that is um, essentially the, the limitations um, of the car. The, the engine, even though it is an ABC and with the carb on it, it just doesn't have a ton of horsepower nor a ton of high RPM. So um, I'll more than likely keep the engine on and just play around with some um, gearing, but maybe in um, a much later episode, we'll put on a different engine and give it a try and see um, what else we can do. Now that the, the transmission, the gearbox is all um, replaced with bearings, that's a big upgrade and for durability. The, the spur gear still looks perfectly brand new, so our mesh um, stayed in place and um, was really great. The, the other thing that I don't think I mentioned before was that when I changed out the um, clutch belt, I replaced the clutch as well with an HPI race clutch. And even with um, the, the low RPM of the engine, we do have some clutch slippage and it's turning uh, the wheels. It's wanting to grab that clutch belt. So I'm gonna have to open it up and make sure that those little, very small studs on the flywheel are holding the clutch properly and take a look at the clutch. And then if need be, I might resort back to that plastic style clutch and just see how that goes in the future. So this is the Kyosho Mantis two-wheel drive upgraded Nitro GP with a GX12 CR engine. Now, if you like anything Nitro, anything 10 scale, especially touring cars, then this is the place to be. And thanks for taking the adventure with me.